Welcome back to our online course on construction grammar. Today I'm going to talk about frames and constructions. Just a quick revision. Usage-based construction grammar claims that constructions are mental pairings of form and meaning and that all levels of description involve four meaning pairs. This is what is known as the constructicon. The input for these mental representations, as we have seen, are specific usage events with rich contextual clues. And this information consists of phonetic detail, including redundant and variable features, the lexical items and construction used, the meaning, inferences made from this meaning and from the context, and properties of the social, physical and linguistic context. Today we're going to focus on the meaning pole of constructions. In construction grammar, meaning does not only include semantics, but also pragmatics, discourse function, as well as other elements. So meaning, from a construction grammar perspective, which is in essence a cognitive perspective, is construal. It's not truth semantics. The most prominent cognitive framework when it comes to meaning is frame semantics, which was founded by Charles Fillmore. And frames, in this sense, are encyclopedic knowledge structures. Frames are knowledge structures that contain information on those participant roles that are highlighted or profiled by a specific concept of language, as well as semantically presupposed background information of the event, which is also called up. Today's session is going to be about frame semantics, but in particular its relationship with constructions. In the Cognitive Linguistic Lecture, which is also online, I will talk about FrameNet, the online database for frame semantics. So what is the main insight of frame semantics? Well, the idea is that any kind of knowledge frame, for example, the commerce scenario, involves several participants and their actions amongst them. So. In our societies, we know that in any kind of commerce situation, you've got a seller, a buyer, goods and money. Now, what particular verbs do, like, for example, buy, is focus, foreground certain participants. So Bill bought a new guitar shows us that buying taps into the commerce scenario frame and particularly foregrounds the buyer and the goods, which are then realized as subject and object. Other elements, like the seller from Steve, or the money that is exchanged for $100, can be added as extra adverbials, but the core construal of buy is focusing on goods and buyer. At the same time, as we see from these adjuncts, the seller and the money are not forgotten, they just constitute background knowledge that is also activated in the scenes. This explains why when someone says Bill bought a new guitar, you can then ask, how much did it cost? Because the money, the cost that is involved, is also conjured up by this scene, by this particular frame. Sell, in contrast to buy, focuses on seller, buyer and goods. So Steve sold Bill a new guitar, and the money is backgrounded. And finally, cost. The guitar cost $100, backgrounds the seller and the buyer. So we still activate them in our commerce frame, but when we use the lexical item cost, we focus on money and goods and put these in the forefront. In this sense, you can also treat argument structure constructions as basic human events. So some of the basic participant roles that we have for scenes which we over and over encounter are agent, patient, theme, location and property. A transitive construction, she kissed him, he sang a song, they opened a box, all involve force dynamic transfer, in which the agent exerts force onto a patient, which is then affected by this action. The form side of this construction is subject, verb and object. And the meaning side links the subject to the agent slot, the object to the patient slot, and the verb slot specifies the specific of the force transfer event. An intransitive motion construction, like you ran out of the house, the fly buzzed into the room, a few leaves are drifting to the ground, on the other hand, focuses on the theme and location. 
So here the subject slot is related to a theme. The oblique slot, which is mostly realized by a prepositional phrase in English, gives you the path, either the source of the movement or the goal of the movement. And of course, the relationship between them, the box, encodes the fact that this is a motion event. In contrast to this, you can also have the relationship between a theme and a location, which is stationary. In the state of B construction, for example, he is in the house, the fly was next to the cheese, a few leaves are on the ground, theme and location are still involved, but now the verbal event, or rather the constructional construal of this scene, is one of stationary location. Themes can also be assigned properties via the predicative B construction, as in he is ill, the fly was dead, a few leaves are green, in which the subject slot always gives you the theme, and the subject complement slot gives you the location or the property of the theme. So how exactly do the verbal frames merge with the argument structure constructions? Well, in Could He Shriek Himself Unconscious, we see that the sole participant role of Shriek, the Shrieker, merges with the agent, and the patient and the result goal slot are provided by the abstract argument structure construction. In Firefighters Cut the Man Free, the firefighters are the cutter, so the cutter role of cut is merged with the agent slot. The cut object is not mentioned because remember, in firefighters cut the man free, we hope that the man is not cut, but the car, for example, from which he is to be cut free. But still, the argument structure construction gives you the patient role for the man because he's affected by the action and the result goal is free. And finally, he'd often drunk himself silly. Again, the drinker role merges with the agent and himself and silly are two roles that are provided by the abstract argument structure construction. For the merging of verbal frames and argument structure constructions, Goldberg therefore postulates two principles. The semantic coherence principle, participant roles of verbs must fuse with constructional argument roles that are semantically compatible. So the shrieker is someone who does something, the cutter and the drinker, and they're sort of actively, invol actively involved, and we can see some kind of force being transmitted from them, which makes them eligible roles for the constructional roles of agent in the resultative construction. On top of that, Goldberg has a correspondence principle, which says that all lexically profiled and expressed participant roles must be fused with profiled constructional argument roles of a construction, and these would be subject or object slots. In these examples, you can see that in two and three, the cut object of cut and the liquid of drink do not appear in the resultative construction, which must mean that these are not lexically profiled. So they will be backgrounded elements in Goldberg's analysis. As it turns out, however, not just the type of participants play a role when it comes to the merging of verbal events and argument structure constructions. Take a look at four. They smeared paint on the wall, a cause motion construction because paint is moved onto the wall. And they sprayed paint on the wall, where again you have a cause motion construction, but this time combined with spray. In both 4A and 4B, you've got a liquid paint that ends up on a target, the wall. So with respect to the semantic frames, you could argue that smear and spray are similar. But if you try to merge them with the intransitive motion construction, you will see that paint sprayed on the wall is perfectly acceptable. But paint smeared on the wall doesn't seem to work. Now, why is that the case? Well, as Yavata points out, it's not just the participant roles that's important, but also the false dynamic nature of the scene portrayed. Spray is a scene in which the manner of movement of liquid going in a mist is construed as a sub-event that can be focused independently of the initial action of the external causer, the sprayer. And because it has this independent movement, it can be part of the intransitive motion construction which hasn't got any agent or causer. Smear, on the other hand, seems to be construed in a way where the manner of smearing is continuously construed as dependent on a co-occurring action of the external causer, 
of me doing the smearing. So because of this, you cannot split off the act of just being smeared, um, of the liquid appearing on the wall, and merge it with the intransitive motion construction. So as this shows, verbal frames and their participant roles do play a role which argument structure constructions can be combined with them. But on top of that, the type of verbal event, how we construe a scene, what kind of sub-events it has got, also play a role in which verbs can go into which argument structure constructions. Summing up. Usage-based construction grammar assumes that mental meaning is construal. And part of mental meaning is going to be frame-specific knowledge. Construction grammar particularly focuses on the interaction of a verbal frame, which includes the event type denoted by a predicate, as well as the participants that are obligatorily called up by this frame, or foregrounded, as we would say, from a frame semantic element. And how all of this interacts and merges with argument structure constructions. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. As I said, if you want to know more about frame semantics, also check out the video which is going to appear in the Cognitive Linguistics lecture. For now, I just want to say thank you for your attention, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.